what is up everybody this is keith and go back here guy 231 and i'm pumped not only for the topic so rare and top shot two like complete vices officially in my life <laughs> but our first uh show with the legend of tilt city fc alex super what's up my man What's up, dude? We've only known each other for like nine months now, and this is the first time we've actually talked as like people, not through text. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we like already know each other. Right. A momentous occasion, though, brought us together. These two wonderful things. Oh man. Not, not to mention the DFS that started. So, so, everything. so just like think about this. Like, if I told you a year ago, right? And I'm sure that this point has been brought up, but it's not been brought up by me, so I I don't care. But if I told you a year ago that your life would not only be consumed with DFS soccer, but now, you know, collectible NBA moments <laughs> and uh, digital soccer cards. <laughs> like, I would have been happy that I finally monetized my soccer fandom. You know, like it took long enough True. When, when you can get into a niche sport, like, I mean, niche sport in America at least and uh turn it into something any amount of uh love for sports turning it into money is pretty cool because otherwise it's kind of a fruitless venture especially when your fandom journey is like mine like i'm from cleveland and everything always sucks other than one year and then i choose a soccer team based on that kind of tragicness so that's why i end up here for spurs right but that's literally why i chose them like there were people in my circle who rooted for spurs and Mm -hmm. i was like yeah it makes sense so um yeah, tragicness is in my life, so I'm glad to uh, <laughs> monetize that. And you know what? Like, it's probably good for these platforms because wow, <laughs> and you know, I'll, I'll specifically talk about silver. I, I haven't had the experience on Top Shop. Maybe you will, but you know, you have at one moment what you think was the best buy ever, and then he gets uh, injured in warmups, and you see his value <laughs> like gets shot in half. So there's definitely ups and downs. Um, actually, it's funny. I, I don't know if I ever have shared this. But like, you know, a lot of people know I'm a Liverpool fan, but most people don't know why I'm a Liverpool fan. So like, as I was really getting into soccer, it was Suarez and Daniel Sturridge that season that they, you know, were just putting goals and mm-hmm. Sturridge used to have the dance. Oh yeah, I do it all the time when and, I score in FIFA. <laughs> and I was like, that's awesome. I want to watch this team. Just cause I like to see that guy, like he looks so pumped. And then like Suarez, I, was just amazing and that, and that became my Liverpool fandom and then it went went to hell really quick for a bit and you know it's was better the last two years and it's back to hell so <laughs> yeah that's it's that's cool. true right. um, actually on kind of on that note though uh a guy in my top shot group uh, an old high school Perfect. friend um we were talking it like our top shot discord turned into a soccer chat the other day because someone asked me for soccer bets and we got to talking about Daniel Sturridge and this dude was like, yeah, normally like I root for the Sweden national team, but also I like Daniel Sturridge. And he's like, what is he up to nowadays? And I was like, oh, he just got like let go from his Turkish team because I was going to say, I think gambling he died. issue. I was going to say, I think he's in Turkey. Don't buy him on Silver, guys. Don't buy him. Yeah, yeah, don't. Don't Not do it. Investment. <laughs> Unless, actually, you know what? I don't even think he has a card, but maybe if he wants the MLS, he would be a great investor. That's All true. Right. So we're going to do this two ways. So Alex is the top shot aficionado of at least close, close to it. And, <laughs> you know, if, if I know a little more and so rare than him. So we're going to talk each among two. More popular right now is NBA top shot, obviously. So I want to start out, Alex. What, what, what do you love about top shot? Or if you had to like give somebody that's watching this, you know, part of like the FSI, FSI subscriber base that, you know, they've heard about it and they're like, oh man, I wonder if I should do it. Give like the little why you love it and why they should do it. Why you should do it is easy. Like if you can get a pack, you're going to profit. Right. Currently. I don't know how long that's going to be the case. We have $239 pack or $229 packs coming out today. All-star packs. Um, Yeah. So like, it doesn't matter what or who you pull, you're probably going to get like a four to $500 moment at least. And then you're going to get six other base uh, cards moments that you'll probably be able to flip for at least the pack price in total, I would think. Maybe not at this point with Collins. The, the market has kind of dropped in terms of just like, you used to be able to log on and just 10X whatever your investment was. And I'm like, that's where I'm at overall is I started with about, I think 239 was what I had just to throw it 
right. in the top shot and I'm, I'm up over $4,000 um, in total profit. Yeah. So and a lot of it's luck. Like I yeah. managed to, yeah, I managed to get a rare pack, two rare packs in a row and two of the $14 packs. In a row. Like I haven't gotten shut out of a pack in a while, except the other day when they did the stress test and I didn't realize what was going on, but as for why it's fun, I mean, the profit is fun and the profit, again, like I wouldn't log on to the top shot and just start buying moments, maybe buy one, buy it. Like you can get, I got a Jared Allen block for $7 the other day because I like Jared Allen. I'm a Cavs fan and he gets me excited right now. So I'm just trying to, ca- I have one of his limited editions from the Nets, which has actually dropped quite a bit in price from where I bought it when the market was super high. But I like learning markets, you know, like I, I didn't know anything about markets until I started playing FIFA ultimate team. And then I kind of learned it that way. And then now I'm actually applying it with real money. If you're into that sort of thing, like to be able to take your fandom and your, your love for basketball and kind of learn that market and how that works is super cool. But I mean, the cards are just dope. Like if you get cool moments, it's exciting. And to, for some reason, just to brag on Twitter, like, yeah, I have this sweet Kelton Johnson dunk. I and serial number 27 or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah, I see, I have one that's actually pretty low. Um, let me look at my, gotcha. it's, it's so, five, 535 of 2021. And it's currently the low price would sell for $592. So yeah. like. And, and he's a guy that, you know, has some definite upside, like. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I guess that's my next question for you. So like the hardest part I've had at Top Shop, like I've gotten two packs, um, to your point, um, two packs, I think one was like $8 and the other one I want to say is $14. Mm-hmm. And I turned that, I don't know, I, I put $200, no, $300 in and I just had to buy a moment to qualify for the all-star pack. Um, so I bought a Jalen Brown dunk because I was like scrolling through who the cheapest people are. And I'm like, I don't want to just buy a crap player. I'm like, oh, Jalen Brown, he, he's actually good. And so I bought one of his. Um, but I think my account's at like $792 just from two packs. And I've done nothing else in the platform. Right. And I guess so that will be my next question for you. Do you think there is a lot still left in terms of buying the secondary market and trying to flip stuff? Or do you think at this point you do packs and then you maybe collect moments, if that's your style, of like either players you like or players that you think have upside? Yeah, if you're going to buy, I mean, I was concentrating on like whatever the lowest price was, see how high a cereal I can get for like $5 more, $10 more. And that benefited me in some ways. Um, I think the big thing at this point is one, definitely still, if you can get your hands on packs, like if you can, if you have the, the liquid assets to try and get packs, absolutely try to get in line and do it. But other than that, what I'm doing is trying to leverage the challenges. So when when we got those pre-order packs when they finally came through, I got two cards out of four that you need for the Mike Conley All-Star card challenge that ends in like 18 days. Knowing that what's going to happen is once the KD rising or seeing stars challenge expires you're going to need kd plus conley plus all of the other all-stars on team lebron to be able to get that lebron card so i'm not going to go for the lebron card because i only had a bradley beal and i was able to flip that for like 200 bucks and finance getting like i ended up getting the guys you need for conley because i got two in the pack it only took me like 150 dollars to get the two or three more i think it was actually five guys not uh, four. So you I, Conley for a time. Right. Yes. To- so even, even if it's a 40 to $60 profit, like that's fine with me. I'm just trying to hit singles and doubles, but basically I'm just trying to leverage that stuff. And like, I, I got a Damian Lillard in one of my seeding stars packs, or actually it was my rare pack. It was the rare pack where I got Kelvin Johnson. I also got a Dame Lillard seeing stars and I knew that he was going to be in that LeBron challenge. I'm still sitting on him. Those prices are rising. I think yeah. I can get like three, three fifty for him eventually. So I think what the would you have gotten, is, and what would you have gotten if you sold him right away? One ninety eight. Okay, so you've almost doubled just by holding. Yeah, yeah. So First. just know, just pay attention to the Top Shot Twitter, the First Mint Twitter. Um, our we have the free Discord at FSI. Like, pay attention to those and learn about the challenges. Anticipate. People are really good about anticipating what's yeah. coming next. So. Yeah do that and you can find value if you just sit on things like i'm not 
necessarily a proponent of unless you need the capital to get to the next pack. Right. I, I think unless you can sell something for a huge, huge gain, you just sit on it until there's an opportunity to sell. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a quick question then we're going to move this over here. But like, so like my personal experience and I, I'm such a novice, but you know, I got like the LeBron series two assist and I like looked up, that was an $8 pack and it was selling for like $230. And, you know, it's a common, right? There's mm -hmm. 35,000 of these. I'm just like, I just got to get rid of this thing because the more that these, uh, the more that come out in circulation, I think that this is just going to fall. Was I right or wrong? I think you were right for a common, especially a common. because there are ways my buddy knows I actually haven't found it myself, but there is a way to see what amount of the mints have actually been packed at this yeah. point. And what it's actually, on evaluate.market or whatever. Oh, okay. It's See, yeah, it's on there. Okay. I haven't found it in there yet. I've been using moment ranks because that use that factors in serial number and um gives me a little boost and makes me feel a little better about my investment because I've bought higher serial numbers, like I mentioned. But yeah, no, that's a good thing too. You have to know how the market flows too, because generally you get things in a pack, people start panic selling the people who are like newer and not like in this for long-term collections. So it'll go up a little bit and then the market gets flood, flooded. There you go. Yeah. See, exactly. So only 26, only 26, only 26% of these are owned. So like that number is going to go down quite a bit. It's 35,000. Like the, the commons used to be 15,000 right. in circulation. They've more than doubled them. So that's going to drive prices down. If you get a common and you can sell it for a big gain, like, I, right. I think yeah. you should swing for the fences. Yeah, because you got yourself enough money to buy the next pack. And that's yeah. going to move you up to 500 and that's fine. Yep. And then, so last thing we're going to do on Top Shot, look, plan is hopefully to do this every single week. So we're going to keep getting into deeper and stuff. But um, this is Evaluate That Market. Uh, Hoop showed me this like when I first got on. He's like, before you sell your stuff, just look at what it's gone. So you can just type in a player, it's completely free, type in your moment, find it out. And just look like, if you want to sell your moment, right away and get the money you could go list lebron for 174 and in 10 minutes you'll get a notification that it's easily. Sold. Easily. um and then you know you need to you do i guess the last thing i would just share can you just real quickly just talk about like looking at their serial numbers and making sure they don't sell like a super good serial for way too cheap yeah so high serial numbers top 100 generally go you know 10x from what the rest of the prices are easily um jersey number so LeBron, the 23 is going to go for big. 23, 23 will probably go for a bump from some of the others in the 2000s. Um, anything with 69 or 420 in it goes for more money than <laughs> other things. That's like actually true. Um, and then the last mint, the, the 35,000th LeBron will go for quite so, a bit more. So, so just the, 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 the pro tip is just pause when you get your thing before you just go sell it. Make sure you don't have a super, and, and again, don't go on to the Top Shot, Shot Discord, like the actual NBA Top Shot. I mean, go on there for joy. Go on there to <laughs> read and just see how insane people are. Mm -hmm. But don't go on for tips. It's way too busy and yeah. it's going to get done. Like, I'm sure there's a million Discords out there. You know, ours is starting to pick up steam. You know, I think we opened ours like a week ago. Um, you know, it's picking up steam. People put drops. You know, people are there to give advice to uh, other people that are new. So, and you can join ours, there'll be a link. Um, all right, that's Top Shot. Let's go, my time. Let's do it. Yeah, learn me a little and, bit because I'm struggling. I, you were telling me you're you're looking forward to this because I'm going to give you some tips of what I'm mm -hmm. doing. So, all right, I'll let you be the interviewer if you want it. <laughs> I'll turn the rings. Well, let's see. I mean, so if, for people you who told me to ramble, although I joked, I joke with you, I have a lot to talk about. That's true. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind your ramblings because I'm going to pick a lot up from you. All so right. basically, basically so rare is you take top shot in the soccer world, you add some crypto and there's <laughs> actually, there's actually a game aspect to it, which so, has really excited me. So there we go. So I think here's what I love about so rare. And it's actually funny. Um, Co-owner army dragon um, DFS who got his first top shot pack. Now he's into that. But it's like great for him, right? Like, so people don't know this. Like, he was a DFS player. He's like doing a little lot less DFS. He does so much for FSI. Like, people have no idea how much stuff that guy does behind the scenes. So, shout out to Army Dragon. Um, you are awesome, Paul. Thank you for all that you do. But so he signs up for Top Shot, makes you know a couple like a hundred bucks on his first pack. He's like so pumped. 
He's like, I'm joining so rare. And he goes, I need your help through this. And I'm like, dude, I can't, I don't have the time to like it so rare. I'll just tell you for those that are like interested, it is deep. It takes time, it takes mm-hmm. dedication. If you don't want to do those things, stick with Top Shot. Um, Top Shot, you can buy a pack. You can live in the excitement. Like I just put on Twitter to me, like the moment that the queue line, the last five minutes of the waiting period on my heart, my heart rate is going up. And then once it's over and then you're like waiting for your line, like there is no greater sweat. That was like, that's like stack corrections when you're winning a GPP, your heart is just like, uh, are you the same way on top shot with like the uh, line? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's again, cause like you just know you're going to profit. So I, I think for the first rare pack I got, there were 45,000 packs or something like that. And I was like 48,000 in line. So I actually wound up weaseling my way into the back end. And yeah, man, I was sweating because I was like, this is a thousand dollar difference. And it was, I I sold what I got in that pack, I believe for $1,200. And you had like a three hour, you had multiple sweats. You had the first sweat of the line and then you had the sweat towards the end. But so, you know, that stuff's awesome for an amateur on top shot. You get that. So rare doesn't really have that. Um, uh-huh. You you ha- there's no packs. You have to build your lineup. But what I uh, you have to build your team. And right now, you know th- things are expensive. Like so rare by definition means everything is rare. The most there is of like a rare card is a hundred. You start and not all of them are in circulation either. Right. So you start thinking about that. There's a huge scarcity element to the game. But what I love and what I like just keeps getting me further and further invested in so rare is not only the game aspect, Alex, right? I love the game aspect. It's a chance to actually follow along, very much DFS related. I've got this card. I think he's in a great matchup. I'm starting in my lineup. What is he going to do? But there's so many different, even little games going on in between it. So I'm very much a short run player. I've talked with you about this. A lot of people have DM me. I have no idea where this market's going to go. It could shoot up. And all these guys that I'm selling for small profits, I could look like an idiot. I already have a few but I'm also locking in some profits. But I see, I know guys on Twitter that are all about scouting these next young players that might have a transfer rumor. They might be going from small Dutch league, which isn't that small, but getting an EPL move and that guy's value is gonna shoot through the roof. Um, so you can play long game, you can you know recruit players, you can go short game. I'm right now doing everything matchup based. I'm buying guys right now for this weekend that I think are in great matchups. I'm still trying to get them at prices I can turn a profit. But if you know if I turn a little bit of a loss, but I get to use them in a great matchup, like so be it. Um, that's kind of the elements of so rare. It's like just multiple. Like I can collect, I can just do complete utility the players have done, or I can like invest in a player's long term outlook. Like, come on. Yeah, if you like a challenge, like it's definitely for you. I mean, the, the barrier for entry is pretty high. Like yeah. I I took my whole uh, stimulus check essentially and put it into Ethereum so I could get on to so rare and my team's still not great, but like it's fun. It's fun yeah. as hell and I love it. Um, I'm having a little trouble. I know I've told you like I've had a little trouble flipping guys because at first I was just buying, I was trying to win auctions to get my reward and my reward was great. He wasn't great against Byron yesterday, but yeah, you got you, and just tell people you got a Joaquin Carrera from Correa, Lazio. yeah, Lazio. And, um, and he's, I mean, he went on the market yesterday for uh 0.19 Ethereum, which is 300 ish, yeah. 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 Best offer 0.194, last auction price. Come on, that always takes a little bit, yeah. I don't so you, know why. You look at the auctions or the offers because I'm going to show you that in a minute. But you know, he just sold for 0. 0.2 a couple of days ago. So yeah, you, whoever's selling him for 0. 0.195 will definitely get, or 0. 0.194 will definitely get that most likely. I think I might have him on the market for 0. 0.194, but I'm all, I also might have bumped him up in the case that he somehow scored against Bayern and his <laughs> price went up, which makes sense. But yeah, I mean that's a great reward, and honestly, like you're going to be if you if you wanted to like get out, which you're not, but you could sell all the other players that you bought for auction and still be ahead on your reward. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. All right. So I kind of talked about the aspects of so rare. I'm just going to for the little bit of time we have left. I'm going to just show people like my process, like yes, you just see how I'm like evaluating players and, you know, trying to price them and turn a profit. So again, like, I, I think you were the first one that mentioned it to me. It's kind of like FIFA ultimate team, like everybody. So here's the fun thing. 
everybody thinks on Ultima Team that you're the only one doing this, that you're the only one looking for like buy it now prices that somebody underpriced the guy and you get to flip him for a big price and you think you're smart. And in reality, every one of us was doing it yeah, on Ultima Everyone's doing it. That's the only way to get each other. It's the Everybody's only like, way to get like 98 overall cards. It's it's like a secret. Like nobody wants to say that they <laughs> spent two and a half hours today flipping FIFA cards, yet we all have been there and done that. So now we're just doing it for real money, right? Yes. Um, so this is kind of what I've been doing. And I've actually been having a lot more success on auctions lately than the secondary market. So I don't know. I'll just show, show an example of something I got last night and overnight. All right. So um, Thor, I, I'm, of course, I'm going to pick the name. I can't even <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Siege the Day told me that if I do this, we need to do the name game. So we'll do this eventually. But I'm going to try. <laughs> Gundmunder Thorensen. I don't know. Might be close. All right. So New York City, left back. He may or may not be the starter of the season. Kind of a super utility guy. Take some sets. First off, anytime I buy somebody, I want to like, if I get stuck on them, I want to like them. So that's my first thing. I'm not buying guys like just because they're there. Like I want to at least kind of like them and think that they could have a good season. So I'm never going to put somebody in my gallery I don't like. But Thor last night, I bid, and so I bid 0.59 when his auction was at 0.01. So I did like six times the auction price and people were probably like, what the heck? Well, here's what I'm trying to do, all right? This is the second time I bought Thor. So I, um, so this is so rare data. If you are like buying cards, do not ever buy a card without going to so rare data and make sure you don't over overpay. So I look at two things. The first thing I wanna look at is what the best market offer is. So that's me right now. And, and here's the trick, little trick in selling. If you're ever trying to sell a guy and you're not the cheapest price, you're not going to sell him. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, if you maybe if you're the same price and you have a bigger multiplier or maybe you have a better serial number, you will. But why, why would I buy 0 0.09 Thor when I could buy one for 0 0.079? Like, most people that are buying are doing it for the game. Yeah. So I look at two things. So I, I know the price. Like, when I bought him last night, the cheapest on the market was 0 0.09. So I'm undercutting the market by 0.01. And then I look at the last sales. So this was actually me. I have already sold him once. I sold him for 0.077. Um, a DFS guy got him from me, funny enough. Um, yeah. But I looked at his last couple sales and you got 0 0.075, 0 0.09, 0 0.097, 0 0.065. So I just went in my head and then I, I, so I store that number and then I go look at auctions. All right, again, the last two auctions are me. <laughs> But I look at the, the market price. cornered. I looked at the I look at the last few auctions. Okay, he went for 0 0.069, 0 0.051, 0 0.053. I look at those, but then those same time frames, he still sold for at those same dates, 0 0.075, 0 0.09. So I know that if I can get him for in my head, it was in that 0.06 to 0 0.07 range, mm -hmm. that I can probably turn him for a small profit. I'm not gonna double my money, but I can turn him. But I have a limit. So at 0.059, um, the next bid price is like 0.067. Um, just, you know, so it kind of bumps it up. I'm not going to be a bit next bidder. So this is like my highest and best bid. And if he goes for more than that, so be it. But I don't want to even be that next guy to do 0.067 because there's not enough margin there. If right. all of a sudden, like he were to get injured, I just get, I get destroyed because I only had like a small, small margin of selling. So that's kind of what I'm looking for on these flips and stuff. I'll just do one more. Um, and this was at the higher, higher price. So torn stress. So I actually bought him for the matchup. Um, Feyenoord is playing the worst team in the Everdees. I really want to make a run at a player rewards card um, as a prize. But so I, I actually think I got a pretty decent deal on him. Um, Hasn't been a ton of sales recently. So you got to be careful when you don't see a sale for like a week. Right. right? But last week he sold for 0 0.275, 0 0.36, 0 0.55. This is when the market was getting insane for a bit. Yeah, right. So you got to watch for the the ups and downs, but pretty solid, you know, even back to when before things blew up, still up there. And I was able to pick him up yesterday for, I'm this one, I'm 0.201. Nice. So he already <laughs> sold for 0.22. Quite a auction. bit lower than the rest of those auctions. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I literally, I bid on him when there was almost an hour left. I bid 0.201. And that was my highest and best number. And like, 
it makes me not like sit there and like outbid. Right. Um, I just toss what my what my offer is. The number that I think I'd be, I told you this, the number mm -hmm. I would be happy to get him at and not anymore. I don't want to get into bidding wars with people. Um, that's when prices get driven up, when people's emotions get in there. Right. Um, so again, though, my, my, my strategy, you got to look at sort of data. I like to look through the auctions and the last sales. So, and then, you know, there's no like method. It's just in my head. And I think most people do this. In your head, you go, this is what a good price on him would be. Right. Yeah, the, it's definitely, I've been trying to do that too. Like you definitely want to set a price at which, you know, you're going to cut yourself off. Because if you go, when you think about the marginal gains and losses of this stuff, I mean, you're paying an Ethereum and the way that Ethereum is going up and down, like those marginal gains can turn into fairly large gains <clears throat> in USD. So um, I actually got really excited there for a second. I, I have my so rare up in the background, which you can probably see in my glasses, but I got a, uh, my bell in the top right. I got a notification. I thought maybe I got an offer. It wasn't, it was about the overbid safety features, which is not as fun as getting an offer, but I, I got a little excited there, but yeah, What's I mean, overbid or you mean you got outbid? No, it's, it was a message from the community about oh. uh, overbid safety features. Oh. <laughs> not fun at all. It was just red tape. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So Notif definitely... notifications are so fun. Like you're like, oh, nice. So you know what the other fun one is, and they're gonna fix this eventually. But right now, it's like a total chase. On you've only had one sale, right? Yeah. All right. So I don't even know if you're watching it, but if you like are watching, you're sober like a hawk, like throughout the day. It's like my my guilty pleasure is just like seeing if my guys are selling. When um the guy when you first make a sale just disappears. Yeah, I had that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um. Or if you like, you have 10 guys for sale, all of a sudden you go from 10 to nine. And so I'm like scrolling through, I'm like, who the heck sold? Cause it's yeah. still like two hours before. It takes, or, yeah, it takes a while. <laughs> it's cause, I mean, look, I guess this is maybe what we're in on, like why I think so rare is, is so cool. I mean, one, if you like the analytical stuff, like I, I think I kind of just showed some analytical side and on, on, on all this, you know, right? There's flipping, there's investing. And then all this, the base of the game is soccer. So like I told you, like Tornstra, if he doesn't sell and my team's always for sale, like if I can make a profit, Same. it's just, yeah. it's whatever. Um, but like, I have complete, my, my thought is to keep him um, for this weekend. Cause I think he has just a phenomenal matchup and he'll probably be my captain. Um, but uh, hold on, I kind of lost a uh, train of thought on it. Um, this, this is what happens when you record too early Alex and you, <laughs> you go on tangents, you forget. I think kind of where I was trying to go though, like you, you have a base game of soccer. You can do all this buying and selling and, and analyticalness of it. And you can just like make projections on like, this is like, if Tornstra has a huge game and puts up like a 90, his value will be even worth more than mm -hmm. it was. Like I've seen people like literally the minute a guy scored, like Adrian Rabio was insane. Yeah, I think right. I sent this on our, yeah. our discord, but uh, he scores the stupid header. Like he didn't do anything for that. He just happened to be there and they marked him with a guy like six inches shorter than him and he heads it in. And all of a sudden you see like three sales for insane numbers. Like three people went to the secondary market and everybody had to have Adrian Rabio because he scored in the Champions League. It's like, okay. And you can make those short-term bets on people or you can make long-term bets. Like, yeah, I got a kid. Uh, we've been talking about constant team Kuchayev for yeah, uh, Cisco Moscow. Yeah. And he's, I mean, I wasn't, I don't get me wrong. I didn't bid on this kid thinking that he was going to turn the next Ronaldo or anything like that, but he's 18, 19 years old and he's on a decent team. Right. You know, they're not, um, they're not Zenit or anything like that, but he's started to get playing time. So now I'm like, Ooh, do I sell him for exactly what I bought him for? Do I, do I just, cause you know, I've been trying to move off of my guys and like get a, get a different team, but I'm seeing that potential for him to rise because he's actually getting playing time. Whereas when he, when I bought him, he wasn't, he was just a U23 and I was trying to get some U23s cause I saw their value kind of going up. So you get to, you get to kind of learn those types of things and make those bets and, uh, live and die with the results for sure. But, you know, he played a nice game yesterday. He did better than Correa against Bayern. Um, that's another thing to note is the scoring aspect of this is wildly different than DFS. Like you get yeah. points when your guy runs into the box. Right. Or the, the is, penalty area. Is makes sense when you mm -hmm. start going like that's an attacking move and should be rewarded. 
Right. Yeah. See, I love that. That was that was actually why I moved to, D, to DFS soccer. Is I was playing FPL, and it's oh. like, all right, you get points for clean sheets, you get points for goals and assists, and then there are these really arbitrary bonus points. I was it like, I don't just want to like, like yeah, I don't want to just <laughs> guess who is scoring goals like that like i want i want to assemble a team based on who's doing the most for their team now philip Kostic blasting in 57 crosses in a match doesn't necessarily make frankfurt a so better team or anything like that but it's definitely closer than fpl but this the ratings on this the scoring is definitely like it's duels won it's possessions lost and that annoying good stuff right i i love that about it is that the scoring is actually like you need to find quality players. And if you don't know what a quality player is within a soccer team, then, you know, you might just be bidding on names. Yep. So I'm, I'm looking forward to learning that. And I do think that there's a, another big advantage, and we'll end on this because we're going a little bit longer than we meant to, and you have to get to work. But <laughs> um, I think a really cool aspect too is there is still a ton of undervalued players out there that actually mm-hmm. are really, really good for their teams. They're just not good names so right and if you can be early on one of those guys that's really good and it's going to get a move like you will see like you just like look at the value of every Bayern guy like even like mark roca yeah. who barely plays barely, still yeah. sells for like 300 400 bucks and you could get like a starter that's going to get your team like 60 70 points for half that price yet because he has a Bayern badge people will pay for it so now let's say that that same guy that gets you 67, let's say he moves to Bayern, I mean, he's going to be worth like one ETH, like easy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's, I'm, I'm interested in that too. Like you mentioned, you know, the guy that's maybe playing in Erie de Vici and moves to the Premier League, like his value is going to go up. Also, he's not going to play for a while, probably, especially if he's a young guy. So like, that's, that's a, a bet you have to make. That's an investment you have to make. But like, if he turns into a, starting center mid for Everton then all of a sudden you know he's four or five six times the price you paid for him so it's it's long term and short term I I think as far as like NFTs go I I love where so rare is at I I love its positioning for the future yeah the game I think adds so much and I know top shot is going to add the game and everything, but like I don't know how it's going to work. That's so not, it just doesn't work though. Be like, I, I just don't see. And maybe I'm wrong, right? I mean, I, it's a, I got into Top Shot too late, right? So obviously, I was I've already taken a small L on that. But I just don't understand how you can take a moment and turn it into a game, right? Like well, because let, LeBron has 17 moments right now. Most some of them are common, so you have like what over 150,000 owners of the best player in the NBA. Yeah. That's the yeah. Name. I think you would have to add like big time multipliers to the rarities, which then all of a sudden you're given like, like Bales all of a sudden can run his number one mint cosmic John Moran out there with a 500 X multiplier. If he goes off, you know, like, so it's, it's going to benefit the top end of that economy a lot. So there are some things to sort out there. Whereas like, the economy is a lot less or a lot more compressed and so rare currently. I think that realistically top shots biggest thing is that they can just do more of these challenges and make be maybe make some more challenges that are more attainable to the masses right. um, and get it, keep it going that way. But I mean, mm-hmm. look, realistically the top shot, they don't have to do much because they're, they have a waiting list for people wanting to get accounts. So they don't really have a, in my opinion, they don't have a huge need to change the game just well there was news on twitter this morning when i woke up saying that the nfl is in contacts with a bunch of different providers so like i'm interested to see how that's going to affect the liquidity of the top shot market i don't know that it's going to like completely shift it but i think there's going to be a lot of people who definitely move over there or maybe at least like you're not going to get the influx yeah that dapper dapper won't know how to get all rid of all this money it already takes long enough as it yeah no kidding all right, hey, let's let's end on that. Let's let's try to do this again next week. This is, this is fun. Um, hey man, it's a hell of a fun way to wake up and talk about yeah. two awesome things. It's what I was gonna do when I woke up anyway. So yeah, yeah. You, now <laughs> you just missed like ten auctions, and you're, just, you're I'm gonna get a text. I'm like, he, how did I miss Kyle Duncan? Kyle Duncan was for sale, and I didn't get him. I don't have any Ethereum available currently. Anyway, I, I got it all wrapped up in MLS, guys. 
hey, hopefully, hopefully I gave you a little bit, a few tips, though, in terms of getting your guys sold. So, and yeah, I think I'm going to relist some right now. <laughs> All right, guys, with that, I'll say, see you.